Live from San Jose, California, it's theCUBE, covering Big Data Silicon Valley 2017. Hey, welcome back everybody. Jeff Frick here uh, with theCUBE. We're at Big Data SV, wrapping up with two days of wall-to-wall uh, -wall coverage at Big Data SV, which is associated with Stratacomp, which is part of Big Data Week, which always you know, becomes the epicenter of the big data world for a week here in San Jose. We're at the historic Pagoda Lounge and we're excited to have our next two guests talking a little bit different twist on big data that maybe you hadn't thought of. We've got Ravi Darnakota. He is the chief enterprise architect at SnapLogic. Welcome. Hello. And he has brought along a customer, Catherine Matsumoto. She is a data scientist at Eero. Mm -hmm. Welcome. Thank you. Absolutely. So we had a snap logic on a little earlier uh, uh, with Garov, but tell us a little bit about Eero. I'd never heard of Eero before for folks that aren't familiar with the company. Yeah, so Eero is um, a startup based in San Francisco. Um, we are sort of driven to increase home connectivity, um, both the performance and the ease of use as you know, Wi-Fi becomes totally a part of everyday life. Um, we do that. We are the, we've created the sort of world's first um, Wi-Fi, mesh Wi-Fi system. Okay. Um, so that means you have, for an average home, three different individual units, and you plug one in to replace your router, and then the other three get plugged in um, throughout the home just to power, and they're able to spread coverage, reliability, speed throughout your home, so no more buffering, dead zones, um, you know, in that way back bedroom. <laughs> and it's, so it's a consumer product. Yes. So you got all the fun and challenges of, of manufacturing, you've got the fun challenges of distribution, uh, mm -hmm. Consumer marketing, so a lot of uh, a lot of challenges for a startup. You guys are doing great. Why Snap Logic? Yeah. So in addition to the 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 challenges with the uh, the hardware, um, we also are a really strong software. So everything is set up via the app. Um, we are you know not just the backbone to your home's connectivity, but also part of it. So we're sending a lot of information back from our devices to be able to learn and improve the Wi-Fi that we're delivering based on the the data we get back. So that's a lot of data, a lot of different teams working on different pieces. And so when we were looking at launch as to, okay, how do we integrate all of that information together to make it accessible to business users across different teams? Um, and also how do we handle the scale? It was seemed like a really, I, I made a checklist <laughs> and SnapLogic was the only one that really seemed to, to be able to deliver on both of those promises um, with a look to the future of like, I don't know what my next right. SaaS product is. I don't know what our next API point we're going to need to hit is. Um, sort of the flexibility of that, as well as the fact that um, we had, you know, analysts were e e able to pick it up, uh, engineers were able to pick it up, and I could still manage all of the software written by, or the, the pipelines written by each of those different groups without having to, you know, read whatever version of code that they're writing. Right. So Ravi, we heard you guys are like doubling your customer base every year, and lots of big names, Adobe we talked about earlier today. That's right. But I don't know that most people would think of SnapLogic really as a solution to a startup mesh network company. Yeah, 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 absolutely. So, you know, that's a great point. So let me just start off with um, saying that in this new world, you know, we, we don't discriminate, we integrate. <laughs> we integrate, and, and we don't discriminate between, you know, and this new world that I speak about is, is uh, social media, you know. Do you bus? <laughs> we, so, 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 so I will get to that. <laughs> Um, so social mobile analytics and, and cloud. And in this world, um, you know, people have this thing uh, which, which we uh, fondly call integrator's dilemma. Uh, you want to integrate apps, you go to uh, a different tool set, you integrate uh, data, you start thinking about different uh, tool sets. So we want to dispel that and really provide a unified platform for both apps and data. So remember when, when you know, we're seeing all the apps move into the cloud and being provided as services, but the data systems are also moving to the cloud. You had your data warehouses, databases, your BI systems, analytical tools, all are being provided to you as services. So in this world, data is data. If it's apps, it's probably schema mapping. If it's uh, you know data systems, it's transformations moving from one end to the other. So we're here to solve both those platform, both those challenges in this new world with a unified platform. And, and it also helps that, that our lineage and, and you know, the, the brain trust that, that brings us here, it, 
we did this uh, you know, a couple of decades ago, and we're here to reinvent that space. Well, we expect you to bring Clayton Christensen on next time you come to visit because uh, he needs a new book, and I think that's <laughs> a good one. <laughs> um, but I, I think I think what's a really interesting part of the story, though, too, is that you have such a dynamic product, right? If you if you looked at your boxes, I've got the website pulled up. Mm -hmm. You wouldn't necessarily think of the dynamic nature that that you're constantly tweaking and taking the data from the boxes to change the service that you're delivering. It's not just this thing that you made to a spec that you shipped out the door. Yeah, and, th and that's really where the, so Auto Connected, we did 20 firmware updates last year, which is totally, like, we had problems with, you know, customers would have the same box for three years and the technology changes, the chips change, but their Wi-Fi service is the same and we're constantly innovating and being able to push those out. Um, but you need, if you're going to do that many updates, you need a lot of feedback on the updates because things break when you update sometimes. And we've been able to, to build systems that catch that, um, that are able to identify changes that say, you know, not one person could be able to do um, by looking at their own things or, you know, just with support. Um, we have leading indicators across all diff sorts of different stability and performance and different devices. Um, so if Xbox changes how they, uh, they, their protocols, like we can identify that really quickly. Um, and that's sort of the, the goal of having all the data in one place across customer support and manufacturing. It's we can easily pinpoint where in the many different complicated factors you can um, find issues. the problem. Yeah. Uh, so I've actually got questions for both of you. <laughs> um, <coughs> Ravi, starting with you, it sounds like you're trying to uh, um, tackle a challenge that in today's tools, would it include Kafka at the you know data integration level, and there it's very much a hub and spoke uh, approach, and I guess uh, it's also you would think of the application level integration more like the Tipco and other EAI vendors in in a previous generation, yeah. which I don't think was hub and spoke. It was more point to point, and I'm curious how you resolve that, you know, how, you, in other words, how you tackle both together in a unified architecture. Yeah, yeah, that's a that's an excellent question. In fact, one of the, um, the, the integrators dilemma that I spoke about, you know, you've got the, the problem set where you've got a high latency, high volume, um, where, you know, you, you go to ETL tools and then the low latency, low volume, you immediately go to the tip codes of the world and that's ESB, EAI sort of, tool sets that you look to solve. So what we have done is we, you know, we've thought about it hard and one, at one level we've just said why don't, why can integration not be offered as a service? So that's step number one where you, you don't, you know, the design experience is through the cloud and then execution can just happen anywhere um, behind your firewall or in the cloud or in a big data system. So it caters to all of that. But then also the, the data set itself is changing. We, you're, you're seeing a lot of the document data model that are being offered by the SaaS services. So the, the old sort of you know, ETL uh, companies that were built before all of this uh, social mobile sort of stuff came around was all row and column oriented. So how do you deal with the, the more document oriented JSON sort of stuff? And, and we built that for uh, the, the platform for, to be able to handle that kind of data. Um, streaming is an I interesting and important question. Pretty much everyone I sp spoke to last year was, you know, streaming was a big, you know, let's, let's do streaming. I want everything in real time. And so, you know, but batch also has its place. So you've got to have a, a, a system that does batch as well as real time or near real time as, as needed. So, so we solve for all of those problems. Okay, um, so Catherine, coming to you, um, your, each customer has a different, um, well, I every consumer has a different, essentially, install base. And um, to bring all the telemetry back, to make sense out of what's working and what's not working, or, or how their environment is changing, how do you make sense out of all that, um, considering that it's, it's not B2B, it's B2C, so there's, you know, I don't know how many customers you have, <laughs> but it must be in the tens or hundreds sure of thousands. <laughs> so, but it's, it's the the it's the distinctness of each customer that I think that I gather makes the challenge the support challenge for you. Yeah, and part of that's exposing as much information to to the different sources um, and and starting to automate the ways in which we do it. Um, there's certainly a lot of we are very early on in as a company. We've um, hit our our year mark um, for public availability the end of last month. So. Congratulations. Uh, <laughs> Thank you. Um, it's been a long year, um, but with, with that, you know, we learn more um, constantly, and 
different people come to different views you know, oh, as different new questions come up. Um, the, the sort of special snowflake aspect of, of each customer, uh, there's, there's a balance between how much it actually is special and how much you can find patterns. Um, and that's really where you get into much more interesting things on uh, the statistics and machine learning side is how do you identify those patterns that you may not even know you're looking for? Like we are still beginning to understand our customers from a qualitative standpoint. So um, it actually came up this week where I was doing an analysis and I was like, this population looks kind of weird. Um, and you know, with two clicks was able to, to send out a list over to our CX team. They had access to all the same systems because all of our data is connected and they could pull up the tickets based on, you know, because through SnapLogic, we're joining all the data together. We use Looker as our BI tool. Um, they were just able to start going into the tickets and doing a deep dive, and that's being presented later this week as to like, hey, what is this population doing? So for you to do this, there, that, must means, that must mean you have at least some data that's common to every customer. For you to be able to use something like Looker, I imagine that if, everything, if every s customer was a distinct snowflake, it'd be very hard to find patterns across them. So well, I mean, you know, look at how many people have iPhones, have uh, MacBooks. You know, there there are a lot of we are, um, we're looking at a lot of sort of aggregate level data in terms of how things are behaving, um, and the you know, the, always the challenge with any data science project is creating those feature extractions, um, and so that's sort of the process we're going through as a data or the analytics team is to to start extracting those things and adding them to our central data source, and that's. One of the areas also where having very integrated um, analytics and ETL has been helpful is we're just feeding that information back into everyone. So once we figure out, oh, hey, you know, this is how you differentiate small businesses from homes, because we do see a couple small businesses using our product, that goes back into the data and now everyone's consuming it. Um, and so the, each of those common features, it's a slow process to, to create them, but it's also, you know, increases the value every time you add one to the central group. One last question. Well, I was just going to, it's just an interesting way to think of the Wi-Fi service and the connected devices as an integration challenge as opposed to it's just this appliance that, you know, just kind of works like an old POTS line, which, <laughs> which it isn't clearly <laughs> at all <laughs> with 20 firmware updates a year. Yeah, yeah there's another interesting point that, you know, we were just having this discussion offline it's a, you know, it's a, it's a startup. They obviously don't have the resources or the appetite to have a large IT department uh, to set up these systems. So, you know, as Catherine mentioned, she was a one, one person team initially when, when they started. And, and to be able to integrate, you know, who knows which system is going to be next. Maybe, maybe they experiment with one cloud service. It perhaps scales to their liking or not, and then they quickly change and go to another one. You know, you cannot change the integration underneath that. You 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 got to be able to adjust to that. So that flexibility. And the other thing is, you know, what what they've done with um, having their businesses sort of become self-sufficient is another very fascinating thing. It's like give them the power. Why should IT or you know that small team become the bottleneck? Don't come to me. I'll just empower you with the right tool set and the patterns, and and then from there, you know, you you change and, and put in your business logic and you know be productive immediately. Let me drill down on that, because my, my understanding, at least in the old world, was that ETL was kind of brittle. And if you're constantly, part of actually the genesis of Hadoop, certainly at Yahoo, was we're going to bring all the data we might ever possibly need into the repository mm -hmm. so we don't have to keep rewriting the pipeline. And it sounds like you have the capability to evolve the pipeline rather quickly as you want to bring more data in from um, into this sort of central resource. Am I getting that about right? Yeah, it's a little bit of both. Um, so we, we do have that central, you know, I think now data lakes the fancy term for yeah. that. Um, <laughs> uh, so we're bringing everything into S3, jumping it into those raw JSONs, you know, whatever nested format it comes into. So, you know, whatever makes it so that extraction is easy. Um, but then there's also, as part of ETL, there's that last mile, which is a lot of business logic. And that's where you run into teams starting to diverge very quickly if you don't have a way for them to give feedback into the process. And so we've really f focused on empowering business users to be self-service in terms of answering their own questions. And that's freed up our analysts to add more value back into the, the greater group, um, as well as answer harder questions that you know both beget more questions, but also feeds back insights into, into that data source and because they have access to, you know, sort of their piece of that last like business logic, 
you know, by changing the way that one JSON field maps or combining two, um, they've suddenly created an entirely new variable that's accessible to everyone. So, so it's sort of last leg, you know, ver business logic versus the full transport layer. So we have a whole platform that's designed to, to transport everything and be much more robust to, to changes. All right, so let me make sure I understand this. It sounds like the, the less trained or more self-sufficient, they go after the central repository, and then the more um, highly trained mm -hmm. and scarcer resource, they're responsible for owning one or more of the feeds and that they enrich that or, or make that more flexible and general purpose so that the, those who are more self-sufficient can get at it in the center. Yeah, and, and also you're able to make use of the, um, the business the, so we have a sort of hybrid model with our analysts, so they're really closely embedded into the teams. Uh -huh. And so they have all that context that you need that if you're relying on, say, a central IT team, um, that you have to go back and forth of like, why are you doing this? What does this mean? You know, they're able to, to do all of that um, in logic. And then the platform, the goal of our platform team is really to focus on building technologies that complement what we have with, with SnapLogic or others that are custom to our data systems um, that enable that same sort of level of self-service for um, creating specific definitions or able to do it intelligently based on, you know, agreed upon patterns of extraction. Um, okay. Heavy science. All right, well, unfortunately we're out of time. I, uh, I really appreciate the story. I'd love to sign up to check out the, uh, the boxes because I know I have a bunch of dead spots in my house. <laughs> uh, but Ravi, I want to give you the last word um, really about how is it working you know, with a with a small startup um, doing some cool, innovative stuff, but it's you know, it's not your Adobe's, it's not a lot of the uh, right. the huge enterprise clients that you have. You know, what have you taken? You know, why is that add value to Snap Logic to work with? Yeah, you know, kind of a cool, fun small yeah. startup. Yeah, look, so so the enterprise, you, you know, is is it's always a, a retrofit job. You have to sort of go back to the SAPs and the Oracle databases and and make sure that that we're able to connect the legacy with the new cloud applications. Whereas with a startup, it's all new stuff, but their volumes are constantly changing. They probably have spikes, they have burst volumes, they have new, you know, they're, they're thinking about this differently, enabling everyone else, uh, you know, quickly changing and adopting newer technologies. So we have to be able to, you know, sort of adjust to that uh, agility along with them. So we're, we're very excited to sort of partnering with them and, and going along with them on this journey and, and as they start looking at um, other things that, you know, sort of the machine learning and the AI and the IoT space, we're very excited to sort of have that partnership and, and learn from them and evolve our platform as yeah. well. Clearly, you're smiling ear to ear. Catherine's excited, you're solving problems, so thanks uh, again for taking a few minutes and good luck with your, with your talk tomorrow. Yeah. All right, I'm Jeff Frick, he's George Gilbert. You're watching theCUBE from Big Data SV. We'll be back after this short break. Thanks for watching.